Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews and to our new viewers, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about the five things I hate about my 458 Spider. Now, I hate the word hate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the word hate for dislike, because it's not really vehemently hate. How can you hate anything to do with this car? So let's get into the items. So first of all, and it's my biggest bloody gripe about this car, it's not a 458 Speciale. <laughs> Obviously I'm joking, but my, my, um, my normal viewers will know that I'm trying to, or would love to move into a 458 Speciale at some point. And uh, so yeah, you can say that's my biggest gripe is it's not a 458 Speciale, but that's not one of the five items. Now I'm gonna cover off some honorary mentions first of all. Now these honorary mentions aren't part of the five items list, but they're just niggly, picky, pinnicky items, if you like, that I'm just gonna point out. Now, first of all, real pain in the backside with these ray seats, although beautiful that they are, I mean, look at that. Yummy, yummy. Carbon fiber, polished carbon fiber, beautiful. So stunningly beautiful these seats are and very comfortable. You have to get your flipping toolkit out to adjust the height. So you've got three settings at the front and you've got a slot at the back to adjust the squab. And in effect, uh, squab front and back, so you can tilt it slightly forwards or backwards. Um, but the ability to be able to raise the, bottom, the, the seat squab is a right pain in the ass. You have to get your Meccano kit out. And in, in even in the, in the times when this car was designed, which is 2009, 2010, you should have had the ability to have even a pump handle to be able to adjust the seat up and down, even the mechanical approach, even the mechanical approach to be able to adjust the seat up and down. It's a pain in the arse you haven't. Another honorary mention is the fact that the throttle take up is really aggressive. There's no cough option. Well, cough option, there's no cough, there's no cough latency as they call it, um, whereby, um, if you, you know, there's, whereby there's a, there's a bit of slack in, in the throttle. Um, as soon as you touch the throttle, it picks up straight away. And that's, people who drive these cars to begin with, it's one of the first things they notice. You get used to it, so again, it's not one of the five major items. Another um, honorary mention is the fact that there's no um, exhibition glass cover, or there's no exhibition glass on the rear engine cover as, as there is on the 458 Italia. Now, I understand the reason why before everybody comments, and the reason being is because the hood is stowed behind this section. If you had an inspection cover, as you can, if you change this engine cover with the Capristo engine cover, then all you see is the tail end of the engine and the, and the filter covers and the, and the um, air filter. You don't really see the actual engine itself because the engine is, is up here. Um, and of course, if they put a display section in here, display panel in here, all you're gonna see is the roof because the roof is folded down behind these rear buttresses. Um, so I understand why the Capristo engine cover 
just shows you a small section of the of the engine and it isn't really the engine you know the engine um, plenums which is a bit you want to see are located around here so that's just another niggling problem my last honorary mention which again is a pinnacky thing for me i know people love the design of this car and i absolutely think this car is beautiful and stunning the only thing that i would change and that i really think is is beneficial on the 458 speciality is the front design i don't actually like the design of these winglets and they changed it for all downstream ferraris now i understand that they're functional and they add downforce on the front of the car but i actually substantially prefer the 458 speciality front of the car so that's one of my other niggling items and that is the last niggly items now those are really picky pinnicky items they're not part of the list they're just honorary mentions if you like so we've covered those off now now to get onto the meat and potatoes of the key items that really really annoy me so the first item and this is a real gripe and my viewers my regular viewers will know that this has been a standard gripe and is a well-known gripe for for these 458 ferraris and actually for all early ferraris of this ilk so the 458 488 and possibly even the f8 because it was partly resolved in the f8 but not fully what am I talking about? I'm talking about the interface to the 458 and downstream cars, but specifically the 458. The interface to the 458 infotainment system and sat nav system. Now, the way how you connect with what now the way how you access the sat nav and infotainment system is with these three top buttons and this joystick. These top buttons have dual controls, so they have two options, two functions. You have to long press, long hold them, or single press them or quick press them, short press them, whichever way you want to call it. Real nightmare, real pain in the ass. For example, if you want to input your destination in the sat nav, then you have to input the postcode separately via using a joystick, juggling through all the different letters. It's supposed to connect to your iPhone for, for um, contacts, etc. And it sort of does, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't really enable the connectivity through there. It should automatically take your home option in the, in the sat nav system. It doesn't. Um, it's a real ball like a real pain in the ass. Um, to overcome the infotainment system, the access to the infotainment system, what people generally do is they use what's called a Bovi 100 or an Invery AirDual 100. Now, the Invery AirDual 100 has actually got updated firmware, so that's a better option. So purchase the Invery AirDual 100 in, as opposed to the Bovi 100. Now, what they do is they plug that into the 30 pin iPod connector in the glove box and that enables you to stream via bluetooth to your to your infotainment system without going through all this hassle through this interface you still have to go in and select the ipod tab in the infotainment system but you then don't have to go through all the just pinnacky options you just use your iphone and just select item through that or you can use the buttons on the rear of the steering wheel so that is a lot better so number one on my item is the interface to the 45a infotainment system now the second item, and again a well-known item for viewers of my channel, second item is lack of proper coffee cup storage in the car. You've got one slot, it's, there's, there's two that show there, but one is like the depth of about two inches, which is no good to man nor beast. Maybe you'd put in there your tracker fob in that front section, that's about all it's good for really, or your keys or whatever, but you wouldn't want your keys jungling around in your, in your center console. But the, the, the coffee cup, the coffee cup section behind that front section is quite deep and will hold a coffee cup but you can't get a large coffee cup in and out of there because you're you've got the impingement of the climate control system so if you do put a large cup in there you're into the situation of perceivably driving the car and you're trying to get the coffee cup out and of course you're going to spill the coffee all over the flipping console all over the carpet all over your trousers look like you peed yourself yeah, it's not a good look guys so so my second gripe is the lack of proper coffee cup, coffee cup storage. Number three on my gripes item is these seat bolsters, the squab seat bolsters. Now, again, it's part of the functionality of the race seats. They hold you really well and they're really comfortable. I find even with long distance driving or fairly long distance driving, say a few hundred miles, I find these seats to be very comfortable. You know, they're brilliant, apart from the situation that I've already mentioned in my honorary mentions, but, these seat squabs, 
these these bolster seat scrubs they want to flip, they want to flipping castrate you when you get out of the car you know i mean my knees my knees and hips are buggered and partly my back are buggered from all the sports i've done so that's obviously self-inflicted so that's my problem but getting in and out of the car i mean just look i mean this is why partly why i've got a spider as well getting in and out of the car just look how i get in and out of the car so first of all i put my my hands on the upper squab and then i get in and then i try and lift myself over the squab so i don't put a lot of wear onto onto the onto the on the onto the bolster on the side of the squab but now look how i actually get out of the car I have to swivel to get out. Again, remember my knees are buggered from all the sports I've done. And then I'm pushing onto the, onto the bolster here. So I'm inducing wear on the bolster with my, with my hamstring of my leg. And then I have to wrestle around. And then if I slide across this bolster, it's gonna catch me right on the unmentionables and try and castrate me. So I have to lift on top of it. And I've got, obviously I've got a lot of strength in my upper body so I can do that. But now I'm sat on the, on the squad bolster and I'm inducing wear. And then I lift up. It's not, it's, it's not the most beautiful way to get in and out of a car. And I know supercars are pain in the ass to get in and out of anyway. And you, a lot of people will, a lot of you will be saying, hey, bloody hell, it's just, a, it's, it's just a minor thing. But every single time I get out of this car, it tries to castrate me. <laughs> so... so it's, it's a pain in the ass. So it is, it is a you know, quite important thing to me anyway. So number four on my list is the indicators and how they're operated. Now, part A of that is the fact they're on the steering wheel and it would be a lot easier if they're on indicator stalks. Now, from the points of aesthetics, yeah, it looks super cool. And Mr. Schumacher got it right from the point of view of aesthetics, being able to have the indicators on the steering wheel. And yes, you do eventually get used to it. But if your hands are all around here and around a different way and you come to a roundabout, then think, which frigging button is it? I should be pressing to indicate right and left. You know, it's in that instance when you've got to make the decision to push the indicators, it's uncertain. So the uncertainty comes into your mind and, and you could get it wrong. That's a well-known problem. Part B, is the fact that with regards to the indicators, you have two operations or two functions on the indicators. You can do what's called a lane change indication, or you can do a main indication. Now, a lane change indication is where you have the indicators flash on one side or the other, depending on which way you're moving, of course, for a small amount of time. I think it's for three flashes on, on the Ferraris. And that indicates you're going to, your intention to, lane, to change lane from your current lane to either the right-hand lane or to the left-hand lane. Now, to instigate the lane change option on the 458, you press and hold the button for a period of a few seconds. And then it does a, a three-flash lane change. To actually switch the indicators on to indicate you're turning right or turning left, a main, a main indication, let's call it, you have to press the button just once very quickly and then it will latch the indicators. The indicators will stay on until either you've turned quite sharply or you've pressed the button again and switched them off. It should be the other way around. And bizarrely, from the 488 downwards, it is the other way around. So they knew it was wrong and they changed it from the 488 onwards, thereby the functionality from the 488 onwards, and, I, and it's not actually changed in the 458 Speciale either, it's changed in the 488 onwards, is that when you just press the button quickly, which is how it should be, then you have the lane change option and your indicators flash for a short period of time. And when you hold the button, then it for, you know, when you hold the button, I'm only talking about holding it for a second, then it puts the main indicator function on where you then have to either cancel it by turning the actual corner to the, to the direction that you're indicating you're going to turn to, or you press the indicator button again to switch it off. Now the fifth and final item, which you're likely going to say, I'm being really picky, and really pinnicky is the lack of seatbelt retainers in the seat. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is commonly on supercars and on normal cars, to be honest, there's like um, a strap here that has a, a push stud option. So it has a push stud fitting on here so you can, un so you can unpress stud it if you want. And it locates the seatbelt. So the seatbelt would be located like this and would be located here like this. And what that stops is this crap, all this rattling around. Now, it's not a, not, not a problem with the driver's seat, obviously, because if you're driving the car, you've got the seatbelt on anyway. It's the passenger seat side. So if you had seatbelt retainers with those press studs, 
then you, you'd l at least have the option of using them. And they have them in later Ferraris and they have them in earlier Ferraris, um, but they don't have them in the 458. And I don't think they have them in the 488 either. I'm not sure if they have them in the F8 or not. I don't think they do either. Now, why is that? Why not? Why have them in the other cars and not in the 458? Who made the decision not to have those seatbelt retainers in the seats? God knows. Like I say, when my son's not, my son's mostly in the car with me anyway, but when he's not, all I hear all the time is, and do you know how annoying that is? Because you're thinking, is it rubbing against the carbon fiber? Is it buggering something up on the car? Is it wearing something? Is that gonna cost me a small fortune? I know it sounds really, really picky guys, but you, when you're driving these sorts of cars, you hear every sound because you're constantly thinking, how much is that gonna cost? Is that a problem? Because you've got to be alert to these sort of things. You're not constantly thinking about that, but it does prey on your mind. So the jangling of the freaking buckle of the seatbelt in the passenger seat, is a pain in the ass. Now, I know it sounds ludicrous, but hey, you know, that's me and these are my, these are my options. These are my items. Now, what you will notice is on that list, there aren't any major flaws and any major issues. You know, you could say that the interface, the infotainment system is the biggest pain in the ass, which is why it's number one. But if you've got that to worry about, and if that's the biggest issue, if you've got that to worry about, and if that's the biggest issue on the car, then hey, clearly the car has been super well designed and it's a phenomenal car. And of course, we all know that these 458s are phenomenal supercars. They hit the sweet spot with these cars. Absolutely stunning to look at, stunning to drive. Even though this is the 2009, 2010 design, this is the 2015 car, but it's the 2009, 2010 Circa design. Still, they are very modern in both their exterior look and in their interior look. Definitely a modern classic, if not now, then soon to be in the future. Absolute phenomenal car. Last of the naturally aspirated. These will go down in history as a super sweet spot for Ferrari. What's not to love? What's not to love about this car? As the sun's dropping down a bit, I'll take off my sunglasses and you can see just the way how the sun's hitting the curvatures of this car. It looks absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. And with a 458 Spider, the car looks as beautiful with the top down as it does with the roof up. What a thing, eh, guys? What a thing. All you guys with 458s will know exactly what I'm talking about. Stunningly beautiful design. Pinaferina got it absolutely right. Beautiful car. And these five items, as I've mentioned, they're picky five items and the honorary mentions are super super picky items but the even the key of five items i had to really struggle to get those items yes they are a pain in the ass for me but they're not major flaws in the car i mean i love this car it's just a stunning car and if i can move into a 458 speciality in the future i definitely will in my mind the 458 is the best designed mid-engined standard production run supercar that they have ever made Obviously, it was the last Pinafrina designed supercar as well downstream. They're designed in-house by Ferrari. But what more, what more can you say? Just look at it. <laughs> Stunning car. Just beautiful and belies its age. Definitely a modern classic. Definitely. If not now, then very soon in the future. If you haven't got a 458, if you haven't got a 458 now, guys, whether it be an Italia, whether it be a Spider, or whether it be one of the Speciali or a Speciali Aperta models, then, and if you're thinking about getting one, then get one now, guys, because these cars are gonna go up in value, I, sure, I can assure you. They're already starting to rise. They are just gonna go one way. They're gonna go higher in value and because everybody's gonna be seeking these out, especially with the situation we've got moving across and away from ICE cars into, into full-on electric, hybrids and full-on electrics, which is how it's going at the moment. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching the channel and thanks a lot for my loyal subscribers and my loyal viewers. If you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing. It's really important to our channel. We are really gonna move this channel to upper leagues and gonna try and make it one of the biggest supercar channels in the UK, if not in the world. Um, so this is very important for us. Please, if you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching the channel, guys, and thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Lots of great content to come. We've got the Amira content to come soon. We've got more content on the 458 as well. Shed loads on the Amira to come in the future. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. So as an addendum to the video, we popped into Marlborough for a coffee, and when we, when we were stopped there, when we stopped there and parked up, there was a Lamborghini STO 
and a 488 Spider that were parked up on the side right out of Nero's. Absolutely phenomenal. Marlborough is the sort of place that attracts those sort of cars, hence one of the reasons why we drive there and park there and do a lot of filming around Marlborough because it's a cool place to film and because people and because people really love the car there as well. But um, it was really cool to see an STO there and a 488, predominantly the STO. The STO looked really cool. As you can see here, the, the livery on the car and the, the, the options, the specification of the car is phenomenal. Um, maybe one of those cars you can't live with when you hear about the other YouTubers, especially Shmi 150 and his issues. Although he loved the, loves the STO, it's a bit hard on the back. And I think it's pretty much a track day car. But it looked absolutely stunning when we saw it. And it's one of those cars, I think, that you really have to see it close up. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And to see those two cars parked together outside Nero's was pretty cool. We parked just, just up from it. You can't see it in these pictures, but we parked just up from it. So yeah, quite cool to see all those cars, three supercars in Marlborough, parked right next to each other in one go. Pretty cool.